So many of us carry such heavy burdens. She's having a relationship with George. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. Deep within, we struggle because sin separates us from God. But thanks to the grace of confession, God compassionately listens, forgives, and sets us free. So if it's been a while since you've been to confession or mass, come home and experience a fresh start. Visit catholicscomehome.org. families in Jerusalem at the time of Jesus too, and there was many other different types of families and broken homes too, you can be sure of it. This is human nature, it's something that we cannot, I suppose, put under the rug or try to sweep it away. In the Senate and the family, there in, in, in October was indeed a wonderful Senate. It still stood for the values of what our Catholic teachings are about. What we mean by family. What is family? The family can be a very broken, dismembered, unforgiving, and a hostile place to be for many people. Not for us all, thanks to God. Some of us have a good family. Some of us have families where we are together, where we are sharing the load, the burdens of all those strifes and problems that we have throughout the world. And we often wonder where we get that model. Where did this model come out of? And the model comes from this family the Holy Family, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. That family, that family unit, was made up of not just, by the way, of Jesus on his own, there was other members of that family, and we don't hear about that often in scriptures. But they came together as a family. In other writings, especially in some of the apocryphal Gospels, we hear about the family and how they live their life within that family. And the way that the family structure was seen as part of not just the unit itself, but that of a greater community. If you listen to the Gospels this morning, 
they talk about Jesus being with his relatives and friends. The family was not just something that was outside of its community. He was part of its community. That's why when we talk about the church in a way, we don't talk about the church as just being a place to come for worship. It is a family. It's a greater, a broader expanse of what it is the Holy Family is built upon. And there is many facets to that particular family. And as we grow in society, that particular facets also spread out in many different ways. One could go and name an awful lot of them and try to find out the wrongs within them, but that's not why we're here. We're here as a family. A family who, yes, is fragmented at times, but also a family that comes together to help each other to grow in community and in the service of God. That's what our family does. And that family is not something that is just for us. There are many others out there who are in need of a Christian family. Who are in need of an example of how to live our lives within the teachings of this church. Not just prophet, by the way. In the teachings of the Catholic faith. The understandings of what the Senate came, came out with in October. It stands firm that a family is to be the structure of society. The proper structure of society. Now, one could look at that from another angle and say, well, there is different families. Therefore, are they part of that structure? They are, by the way. But the ideal and the structural integrity of the family is indeed what the Senate has taught us. It is a natural family. A family that is in participation. Wow, when I read that, I was saying to myself, well, I've been thinking, I've been saying this for a while, talking about the idea of participating in God's creation. And that's what they mean. This doesn't mean just by being someone who comes in and says, well, I'm going to do something for the church. Not that kind of creation. Yes, that is something we need. But it is about being ready to live the idea of the Holy Family to its fullness. To understand that there is a certain holy core to the family. And that the structure of that family in its nature and in its naturality is actually about the real understanding of God's gift and not something that we have over it. We look at family sometimes and we think that we are the ones who actually are the patriarchs of that family. Well, if you read this, the, 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 the documents of the Senate, <coughs> that's not what the church is teaching. The core of the family is your faith. It's God. The model of that family is the family of the Holy Family. Which is, of course, the whole communion of the church. So it means we have to be inclusive to separate and different types of families, that is true. But the ideal which we are supposed to live by as being Christians or being Catholics has a higher, higher calling, a more expensive or extensive understanding of family. 
And I know that many people suffer family breakdown. That's a, it's a horrible thing to see. It really is. You look around you in today's world, if you look at marriages, if you're just to go on marriages alone, you're looking at about around 65% of all marriages breaking down within the first five years of marriage. 65%. But in the next 10 years, you're talking about around a 50% breakdown in marriages. Complete breakdown. And what are you left with? A fragmentation. What are we supposed to do about that fragmentation? Well, that's where the church family comes in. It helps the one who has been broken to try to help them understand that they're still a member of a family group. And they may not like what they do, by the way, at times. But they're still a member of our family group. Charity always is present within the family. And why? Because it is on charity that we get what we have in our little crib here. What scripture has given us, the gift that God has given us in the Holy Family is that understanding of charity. There are times when we would disregard or really hate some things that happen. But there is charity there. We have to love those who break, who fall, who walk away, who do the things that don't seem right to us. Then the question has to be asked, is why is that happening? Why is this happening in our world? How are we supposed to help them? Well, that's, in, again, the Senate from the family gives a little bit of insight to it, that we as Catholics and as Christian people are to live the Holy Family experience. That's a, that's a pretty heavy one to ask. Because we, in the family, then have to actually show mercy, have to show love to our spouses, to our sons and daughters, who will probably drive us nuts sometimes with what they do and say. Even with our spouses sometimes, there is a problem. And we fight. So charity has to be brought into the picture. Forgiveness has to be given. This model comes, of course, again from the Holy Family. It is the ideal model to what we are supposed to walk with. And it is through that model and through that, ex I suppose, experience of that model that we will be able to help others stay together in their family. I know I was giving a wedding homily one time and I had the two in front of me and I said, welcome into the family of the church as a couple. And I gave them a long spit about what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it and the way they're supposed to do it. And then I looked up at the people and I said, you know something, you think that just because these two have come together as a family, and you have no longer to do with them. The father gives away the bride. He says, that's it, she's done, she's out of the house. We'll paint the room and use it as my den. The wife will turn around and say, no, 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 that's not going to happen. Because once she's gone, I'm going to use it as my sewing room or something else. But it's not going to be used as your den. But they have already separated their daughter from their, from their wives. They pushed her out. She's gone. That's not what the church family talks about. The church family is supposed to come around these two people. Their responsibility actually grows when somebody marries within the church. Here's anyone talking. 
Because that fulfills something. It fulfills the understanding of being a family baptized within the church. What do we say to the people when we have a baptism? That you are the ones of the teachers of the child. Wow. <laughs> They're still children. So our duty as a Christian family is to help those who are finding marriage in the, in our life in the big struggle. I also told them that if they needed help, that they should come to the church. They should walk up to the priest that they know of their local pastor and tell them, we're having trouble. How do we get around this? Instead of staying at home and fighting with each other and making the thing worse. Have you spoken to your parents? No, I haven't. Why? No, well, they don't want to do it. They put too much on their plate. Mm, they don't have too much on their plate, by the way. Their duty as parents is to actually help you with your marriage. Go to them. They are together for the last 60 years in their lives. You want advice? <laughs> There's there the person with the advice. How did you handle this? Or how did you make this out? What are we going to do with this or whatever? But be in communication with your family. Charity. Ah, that's part of it. But today let us pray that we may be able to do that. That through our example, through our love for Christ, through our love for our family, of St. Francis, that we can actually encourage others to remain together and to see through us the understanding of what it is a true family should be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So many of us carry such heavy burdens. Come on, babe. It'll be fun. It's just you and me. Deep within, we struggle because sin separates us from God. But thanks to the grace of confession, God compassionately listens, forgives, and sets us free. So if it's been a while since you've been to confession or mass, come home and experience a fresh start. Visit catholicscomehome.org.